All right, so um, last class we were talking about the double exposition plan that Mozart established with the first movement of Concerto. And I talked about comparisons of the first movement of the symphony with then what you see in this first movement concerto. And um, specifically, some things you should know are the places that you expect to have the 2D sections within the movement. So there were five places within that movement that you can expect to have orchestra sections. So it starts out with an opening 2D that is the longest orchestra section, so it starts out sounding like a symphony. It uses the same basic orchestration as a symphony. So you can look at the same instruments with pair of winds. If anything, the classical concerto will reduce the number of wind players. So instead of having two flutes, you might just have one flute. Or um, omit the clarinets, like is what is the, the case here with Kershaw 466. This Mozart D minor doesn't have clarinets. And so the opening um, statement of the A theme would then, um, then lead to a second thematic idea that would be in a contrasting key, just like you have in the symphony. But then it returns to tonic for closing material that then prepares the entrance of the solo. So that section, that passage, is different than a symphony in that the symphony doesn't return to the opening key until you take the repeat, you know, until the end of, of the exposition. <coughs> and so what Mozart's done is to replace the repeat signs with then this idea of having the opening part being given to the orchestra and then what amounts to the repeat is then when the soloist enters. So we looked at that. We also talked about just some basic <coughs> characteristics of Mozart concertos, which is the importance of the woodwinds. And so in this particular concerto, the B theme is given to the woodwind section. And it's in the contrasting key of F major, the relative major key. When the soloist enters then, the soloist is given its own theme. And so that also is something that is a, a Mozart characteristic. And so that was the genius of Mozart was his ability to delineate these three personalities within the ensemble of orchestra, soloist, and then would give the winds an important part as like a third competing force. So one other um, characteristic that you'll hear at the end of the exposition, then, is virtuosic writing for the soloist. So for piano concertos, you have lots of scales and broken chords, arpeggios. And that you would have a trill on the second and third steps of the scale over a 5-7 harmony. And it would feature an Alberti bass accompaniment in, in the left-hand part of the piano. And then it cadences to tonic, and that was a way of marking the end of the section. And so we listen to the exposition. That's then followed by the second 2D section. And that is then where we stopped last time. So when the <coughs> soloist then enters again as the beginning of the development section. And in this particular movement, what we're going to hear is a conversation between the soloist and the orchestra, with the soloist stating the soloist A theme, which started with the octave leap, and then it's answered by the orchestra then presenting its A theme from the beginning of the movement. So you have a statement in F major, and then when the orchestra answers with its A theme, then it modulates up a step to G minor. Then you have the soloist then restate that soloist A theme in G minor. <coughs> and then the orchestra answers. And so it's this conversation back and forth. So we'll put here, and, and this is just in this particular concerto, so this isn't something that you know is a, is a basic plan, but as you know, the development section is the most open as far as not having specific things in mind other than 
It's based on themes of the exposition, and it's going to modulate. So that's the, you know the basis. So soloist, a theme, and so it goes through F major, G minor, E flat major. And that's the first section of development, so those three keys. Then the final section of development, and one thing about the development is that it's quite a bit shorter than the exposition. And what we're going to hear is then the piano present broken chord passages and, and arpeggiated passage work while the orchestra is developing its A theme. And so that will go through circle progression it reaches a retransition and then you have the recap <coughs> and this is going to be the third two section so the places so far that you've heard the two sections and you should be able to identify those within the structure as well as what key you would ex expect. So the opening 2D is in tonic, and then the second 2D is after the soloist finishes its part of the exposition, and so it's at the very end of the exposition, and it's in the second key. So the second 2D will be in the contrasting key. The third 2D then occurs at the recap, and this is back in tonic. This is very short, and it's, it's more like what you're going to have associated with the soloist portion of the exposition. They'll have a retransition. In this particular movement, it reaches the same half cadence. And then, one thing that's unusual is that instead of having the B thing that had been associated with the woodlands, then Mozart isn't going to present it in tonic. It's going to be presented in F major again, like it's always been presented in the movement. So that's one thing that's unusual. But then, at the end of that presentation, then it modulates to D minor. And you have then that B2 theme that was initially presented in the uh, soloist part of the exposition. That's in D minor. Everything else then about the movement is just exactly the same, except it's just all in D minor rather than F major. So you have the same closing material, the same virtuosic writing for the piano, um, and the same conclusion with the trill on the 5-7 harmony. So that's just a marker for the end of the section. And when that then cadences on tonic, that is the fourth 2D section. What the fourth 2D section then does is to connect to the cadenza. This will always be very brilliant, and it will lead to a real strong arrival point. And this leads to a 164 harmony. And so the fourth 2D ends with a 164 chord and a fermata. Okay, this then leads to a cadenza, and I mentioned the fact that for this particular concerto, Mozart, the Mozart cadenza doesn't survive. Some think that he, he did write something out, actually. For the opening concerti, um, the, you know, the ones that point out, they did have write out cadenzas, but anyway, these middle, the, the later um, concerti don't have surviving cadenzas. So the one that we're going to hear is the one by Beethoven. And so I have mentioned how, how much Beethoven admired this work. So this cadenza is based on a cadence. The, the formula for it is that. The orchestra reaches this 164 harmony. So this is where we're at right here. And the function 
of the cadenza, one thing is that it's a soloist development section. And so what that means is that it's based on themes of the movement, so it's, it's going to sequence themes that you've heard earlier, and it's going to modulate through closely related keys. And so that's the, that's the definition of a classical development. But some other things are that the cadenza is always has a virtuosic display. And something that shows off the technical skills of the player. It also is something that is unaccompanied. So it just features the soloist. It also has an improvisatory element to it. And so that is something that would give it that spur of the moment aspect um, and is one of the ways that the soloist could um, contribute to the compositional process. So you'll hear the cadenza unfold. At the very end of the cadenza, then, you reach 5-7 harmony. You'll hear a trill, the same basic trill pattern. And then it will resolve to tonic, and when it resolves to tonic is when the last 2D section is heard. So that's then when 2D5, and that functions as a coda, and concludes the movement. So if I ask you what's the harmonic formula of a Mozart cadenza, the basic formula is 164, which is where the orchestra concludes that fourth tuning section, so it reaches a 164 chord. The cadenza unfolds, has these characteristics. It ends with a 5-7, with a trill, and then one. So you want, you want to identify those three harmonies with the cadenza itself happening between the 164 chord and that 5-7 trill. Okay? So, I'm going to give you a copy of this. Yeah. We're going to pick it up where we left off last time. Last page is going to loose. measure 174. That's where we're going to pick it up here. So this is the second 2D. <coughs> so the soloist has just ended with the trill. And now the orchestra will present material leading to the development section. 